Hello, hello, welcome back to Funnelheads. Well, as you probably already know, uh, if you watch the news, especially any type of cruise news, is that a man went overboard last Wednesday on the Carnival Valor. Luckily, he was rescued, so it is one of those miracle stories. Uh, now, you might be wondering why I'm bringing this up over a week later after the incident, and that's because he actually just did his very first interview on Good Morning America this morning, talking about, you know, what happened before the incident, uh, of course, his time in the ocean, as well as the rescue. Also, at the very end, they ask him if he'd ever go on a cruise again, and the answer actually surprised me a lot, but I wanted to get everybody's kind of uh, comments, opinions, uh, you know, just take on the interview itself, and I will save my thoughts for after you see the interview, so stay tuned. Our ABC News exclusive interview with the Alabama man who spent 20 hours treading water in the Gulf of Mexico after falling from a cruise ship. He's sharing his incredible tale of survival and rescue at sea. Eva Pilgrim here with the interview. Good morning, Eva. This was a crazy story, guys. While his skin is raw from the salt and swimming, somehow James Michael Grimes doesn't have a broken bone or even a cut. His family says it's a Thanksgiving miracle when he already knows has changed his life forever. It was a Thanksgiving to remember. James Michael Grimes knows he's lucky to be alive. My worst fear is drowning and that was something I did not want to have to face. The 28 year old going overboard a cruise ship in the middle of the night saying he spent about 20 hours treading water alone in the Gulf of Mexico. I wanted to see my family and I was dead set on making it out of there. You know, I was never accepting that this is it. This is going to be the end of my life. It was supposed to be a Thanksgiving celebration. James Michael and 18 of his family members boarding the Carnival Valor last Wednesday in New Orleans. We were just hanging out, having a good time, watching some live music. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Did you have a few drinks? Uh, I had during the day and I'd actually did like an air guitar solo and there was a competition they were doing and I'd won it. So I'd won a free drink. So I had that. But. But you hadn't had like, you weren't like inebriated, had like a ton of drinks. No, ma'am. No. How many drinks do you think you'd had? Uh, it's, I couldn't really say. Around 11 p.m. that first night on board, James Michael told his sister he was going to the bathroom. What happened next is still unclear. Do you remember leaving and going to find the bathroom? No, ma'am. Do you remember falling off the boat? No. So you don't know how it happened? No, ma'am. I came to regain consciousness. I was in the water with no boat in sight. So you, for a while, were passed out in the water? Yes, ma'am. Yep. And I can't float myself even when I'm trying to. So there had to be, you know, the Lord was with me when I was out there because something was holding me up the whole time while I was passed out. The next day, when he hadn't returned to his cabin, his family alerted the ship's crew. At 2.30, more than 12 hours after James Michael was last seen, Carnival notified the Coast Guard of a missing passenger. We did have a, a fairly significant search area. It was a potential of over 7,000 miles of ocean we had to search. James Michael was alone in an area known to be a feeding ground for sharks. I thought it was a shark. I mean, I was swimming in one direction, and I looked around, and I seen it at the corner of my eye, and it came up on me really quick. And I went under, and I could see it, and it wasn't a shark, I don't believe, but it had more like a flat mouth, and it came up and bumped one of my legs, and I kicked it with the other leg. It scared me, not knowing what it was, or at the time, how big it was. All I could see was a fin. The avid outdoorsman tried to stay positive and calm. Exhausted and hungry, he ate what he could find to maintain his energy. A stick come floating by. Looked like bamboo. So I started eating on it. And it actually, I mean, I'm not going to say it tasted good, but it gave some type of flavor in my mouth other than salt water. Was there any point while you were out there where you thought, I, I, I don't know how much longer I can keep doing this? When it started going, getting back towards nighttime again, the water started getting colder. At that time, I thought, you know, how much longer am I going to have to be out here? Yeah, but you just kept swimming? Yes, ma'am. You know, I, the fall didn't kill me. You know, sea creatures didn't eat me. I felt like 
I was meant to get out of there. As the sun was going down Thanksgiving night, James Michael says he spotted a glimmer of hope, the lights from a tanker ship, and decided to swim towards it. That was my final little burst of energy. The strength that I had, I used pretty much every bit of it too try to make it to one of them. The Coast Guard then arriving, his miraculous rescue captured on camera. The water. When the Coast Guard got there, yeah, what happened? Uh, they circled the boat two or three times looking for me. And, you know, I was, I'd done taking off my socks and everything and was just waving them around my head, trying to do something where they would see me. And when that light finally hit me, somehow I heard, we got him. And I seen a guy coming down from that helicopter and it was coming towards me. You know, right then I thought, man, this is, I, I see the light. When the Coast Guard guy showed up in the water, what'd you say to him? <laughs> well, the first thing I actually told him was, I don't have any clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't. <laughs> I didn't strip down of everything. He said, that's fine. All right. And I was just like, okay. And he told me to hold on to this life vest when I was just thinking, thank you. You know, you're like a guardian angel coming down for me. His rescuers believe he was seconds away from not making it. I swam to as fast as I could. Um, as I got to him, I shoved the rescue sling under his arms and he collapsed into it. He, he had nothing left. James Michael says the whole experience has given him new purpose. These were actually the pants that I'd plan on wearing on the cruise but never got to, and I put them on this morning, and I reached in the pocket, and there was something, it was a fortune, and it says, life's a beach, enjoy the waves. Do you think it changed you? Yes, definitely. It opened my eyes. Uh, just, I take things for granted, I reckon, or a lot of people do. Do you think you'll go on a cruise ship again? Yeah, I will. Really? Yeah, I ain't gonna let it discourage me that much. Uh, I might not get within 10 foot of the rails, but I'd definitely be open to going on another cruise because I really didn't get to go on this one. <laughs> yeah, it was the first day. Carnival <laughs> tells us they do have safety barriers in all the public areas that prevent guests from falling. As for James Michael, he told us he is thankful, very thankful to all the people that helped rescue him and that the experience has taught him the true meaning of being grateful, especially on Thanksgiving. Guys, he was planning to eat so much on this cruise ship. Yeah. He actually lost about 20 pounds oh, sure. all the swimming mm -hmm. in that 20 almost hours that he was treading water. You know, I've always said with the air it's solo the air guitar, guitar yeah, the they <laughs> to enhance Brilliant. the safety standards at those competitions. <laughs> you said he was laughing through a lot of this. He, he is a very good sport about it. He he sees some of the funny parts of it. He was definitely scared and he is very grateful. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. wow. What an interview, Eva. You gave us a couple laughs too. Sure. <laughs> that was something. <laughs> Thanks so much. So that was the interview in full. Now, before we get to my thoughts on this interview, I just want to say that I'm so happy and thankful that this man was rescued after so many hours in the ocean. I couldn't even imagine what that would be like. And I'm so happy for his family and friends, especially those that were on this cruise ship with him. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he had almost a dozen people traveling with him. Now, my very first thought after watching this interview was actually a phrase that cruise goers hear a lot, especially lately, and that is, you just don't fall off of a cruise ship. Something had to have happened either uh, intentionally or unintentionally. However, I do hope that there was cameras in the area or cameras leading up to the area that it happened. Hopefully Carnival, I'm sure, has a huge investigation going on on exactly what happened that night. However, for the passenger not remembering anything from the actual air guitar competition until the moment that he was actually in the water uh, raises a few red flags. Uh, let me know if that does the same for you. Uh, I do, however, love the fact that he was actually laughing about the incident as well as the interviewer uh, and actually the whole Good Morning crew, Good Morning America crew, I should say. Uh, but again, let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this interview and what you think happens that night. Uh, I'd be very interested to know what Carnival finds out in their investigation. Of course, the cruise industry as a whole has definitely a problem with guests going overboard, especially in this last year to 18 months. So hopefully they can figure out something to rectify this issue. But hopefully I'll see you right back here in the next video or on a cruise ship one day. Catch you later.